How's it going everyone? Welcome to another Roblox tutorial. We'll be making these doors that open and close in today's video. So let's get started and I'll see you guys over in Roblox Studio. All right, so now that we're in studio, you might have already noticed that there's a door in my game. Now, if you want to grab this door, go down to the description below, click the link that I have provided for you guys to go and grab that uh, door model that I've created. Then hop back into studio, go to toolbox, my models, and insert the door model. And if you want to use your own custom door, I highly recommend you finish watching the rest of this tutorial so you'll be able to use that door properly with the custom or with the door system that we'll be making. So now that I've covered that, I want to cover this door here. So if we click this door and we click the arrow here and the arrow on base, you'll see that there's an attachment here. Now imagine the attachment as the hinge for the door, but instead of there being two, there's only one and this door will rotate around that attachment. So be careful where you place this attachment because wherever this attachment is, the door will rotate around it. So now that we've covered that and got that out of the way, I think it's about time we start coding. So if we go ahead to this little arrow next to starter player, click it so it's facing down, and we go to starter player scripts, uh, we're gonna wanna click that white plus icon. And we're gonna wanna search up local script until we find it. Then we're gonna click that and we're gonna go ahead and click on that local script we just created and we're going to name it client you can name it whatever you want the name doesn't really matter in this case and we're going to press Control a to select everything in the script and press backspace to get rid of it now we're going to go back to that script and we're going to press the little white plus icon and we're going to search up module script until we find it then we're going to click on it and then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change the name of our module script to door and the name and the name does matter here so please name it door with a capital D next we're gonna do control a backspace like I just did and then we're gonna access our services so our services are gonna allow us to use or access certain things so like for example our player service is gonna allow us and by the way if you're wondering how I'm auto completing some of these things as I type Roblox gives me these suggestions and I press tab to fill it out so the player service will give us our player. So that's a good example of what the uh, what our services are going to be doing for us. Like the tween service, for example, uh, is going to allow us to animate our door. Next, we're going to want to go ahead and get our player variables. So our player is going to be equal to the local player in the player service. And then we're going to want our character uh, variables because simply because we need to use the character a lot for a door script like this. So we're gonna use the character given in the player. But let's say, hey, Spooks, what if this character doesn't exist when this script is ran? Perfectly fine, because the player variable or the player object comes with an event called character added. And this is fired whenever the player spawns in a new character. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. And every time this event is called, this function will be called with a parameter or a variable given to us. We're just gonna name it car, short for character, and we're gonna set our character variable to car as well. So now we're gonna define our settings. You can mess with these whenever you want, but basically we have our first setting, which is gonna be door circle size. So imagine a circle where the center is the door. And let's say the size of the circle is five or five studs long. So whenever the player enters that circle, the door opens. Whenever they leave it, the door closes. And then door open angle. So with opening that door, let's say 125 degrees, when the player enters that circle, the door will open 125 degrees. So just imagine the larger the angle, the farther it opens. And then time for door to open. This is kind of easy to understand. It's just the amount of time in seconds that the door it takes for the door to open. And then we have the door easing style. So this is the animation style for the door. So we're gonna set this to enum.easingstyle.sign, which in short is just a very smooth, natural animation style. You could set it to bounce if you want it to bounce as it opens, but uh, for now we're just gonna set it to sign because that's pretty simple. So now we're gonna have our main code and we're gonna go ahead and create a doors table. This doors table is simply going to be used to keep track of the doors that we activate. And then we're gonna to wanna to create a function called create, and we're gonna be given a variable called object. And we're gonna check if 
this object already exists in our doors table and if it does then for now we're just not going to return anything but we'll return something later on when we finish this function so now what we're going to want to do is we want to create a new variable called descendants I don't know why that space isn't getting in there but we want to go ahead and get the descendants of the object and by the way uh, wow I really cannot type so this the these descendants is going to be the every object underneath our door model so this object this object that object that object and that object not that one though so I'm just gonna deselect those we're gonna have an anchor variable as well and then an underscore object and pairs descendants do so what we're doing is we're gonna be going through every single object in the descendants table so it's gonna allow us to do uh, you know certain things like check if that object is an attachment because we want to be able to get that point of rotation for the door and if it is an attachment then we know we found it and we're just gonna set our anchor to object and we're gonna break and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that anchor point or that anchor that we've gotten and we're gonna get the position that it is in the world we're gonna get the center point of the door so object get bounding box that's going to give us the center of the door and then we're going to get our anchor orientation and what this is is just basically imagine a uh, a point going in a certain direction this is the direction facing the right of the door so we're going to start from uh, zero 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 and then we're just going to go to the center point dot right vector so the right facing direction and then we're going to create a c frame c frame dot new anchor point times anchor orientation and then we're just going to destroy that anchor because guess what we don't need it anymore so now we want to create a cache this cache is going to be uh, containing all the objects of the door that has like a position property or a size so for object and pairs and guess what again descendants do uh, if object is a base part then what we're going to do is we're going to cache that object, right? We're going to basically say anchor C frame inverse. And then we're going to multiply that by the C, uh, the object C frame. So this is just going to get us the distance from the anchor point to the object. So now that we've done that, let's move on to the function list because we're almost done with this function actually. So we're going to want to create a function list. So we're going to do functions is equal to a table and we're going to say disconnect. Now this functions list, you can expand upon it later on with like uh, opened or closed. So it's going to be one of those uh, type of tables that you can add on later. So doors object is equal to nil. We're just going to say, okay, well, if you're done using this door, then we just won't bother tracking that door anymore. So that's it for the functions. Uh, and then we're just going to do this add door to door list it's uh, pretty simple so doors object is equal to this table anchor oh whoops anchor is equal uh, equal to anchor C frame center is equal to center point cache is equal to cache functions is equal to functions timestamp which is just going to be basically how we keep track of where the animation is is equal to zero the very start and last desired angle is simply just going to be zero so just uh, imagine last desired angle being when you're opening the door and then you leave it will be at 45 degrees open so then we need to keep that so we go from 45 to zero instead of like 90 to zero and then we just return functions so now that we've done this and we know that we return functions here and we know that we store the functions that we have all we have to do is go back to doors object dot functions and there we go now the create uh, function is done so now we're gonna move on to using the second service run service so run service dot heartbeat connect function so every frame we want to run this function and we want to give and basically it's going to give us the amount of time it took between each frame so now we want to check okay does our character exist and does the character have a primary part if they do then we need to get our character center and we're going to set that character dot primary part dot c frame that needs to be a capital p there we go for underscore door in pairs so we're going to go through every single one of the doors we have we want to get that door center so door dot center 
we want to get that offset, so door center inverse times character center. And then we want to get in radius. So offset dot p dot magnitude is less than or equal to Durkle, uh, door circle size dot Durkle. Uh, basically, what we're just saying is, OK, is the distance between the player and our door less than the circle size? And if it is, then we could go ahead and say if we're in the radius and not door dot open, if the door isn't open, then we're going to say angle is equal to math dot eight and two offset dot z offset dot x now don't worry about uh you know don't worry about this mathematical function you don't have to know what it means it just works it gives us the angle that you know it's at so now we want to go ahead and do open door and angle so we're going to give the open function a door and we're going to give it at an angle at which we came it at so now we want to go up and we want to go ahead and create a uh, open function which is pretty simple. So first we want to create a reset function, which is going to be used by the open function. So first we want to reset the door. So the door dot animating is equal to true, which is basically saying, okay, we're going to be using the reset function when we're animating. And uh, we're going to mess with this afterwards. And we're going to set timestamp is equal to zero. And then we want to do function open door. This is the open door function. So we want to say door.open is equal to true. And then uh, we want to reset the door. And then we want to set door.desired angle, which is basically saying, okay, this is where we want the door to rotate to, is equal to math. Oh, shoot, I can't type that in. There we go. Math.rad door open angle times negative math dot sign angle which is just going to be saying oh and we forgot to add this here there we go and this is just going to be giving us a negative one or one ba based off whether or not the angle is negative or positive so now we have our desired angle we can actually go back here and say dot last desired angle is equal to door dot desired angle or zero times door dot timestamp. So this is how we get the 45 degrees from the 90 degrees is if it was halfway open, then 90 times a half is 45. So there we go. Now that we have the reset door and uh, open door function done, we go ahead and come back all the way down here and uh, get back simply to where we were, which is then we need to create an else if here to, can, uh, to handle closing the door. So if we're not in the radius and the door is open, then all we have to do is close the door. And for some reason, it was like that. So first, we need to close it. And we don't even have to give it an angle because there's no angle to give it. So now we're going to go back up here. And we're just going to say function close door. And uh, this one is pretty simple. Door.open is equal to false. We're going to reset the door. And then all we're simply going to do is we're going to set the desired angle to zero. So door dot desired angle is equal to zero because we're closing it. It's just going to go back to where it started. So now uh, we're going to get to the very end of the script, which is uh, basically the animation part. So door animating and then uh, if door dot animating, then so basically, we're just saying, OK, if the door is being animated, we're going to check whether or not the animation is finished. So if the timestamp is greater than one, then it's no longer animating. And then for object offset in pairs, door dot cache do just in case we're just going to set the uh, objects back to where they were originally. So time C frame dot from orientation zero door dot desired angle zero times offset. And then we're going to go outside of this. If door dot open, then if door dot functions, which reminder from earlier, if the functions does have an open function, then we're going to call it. And then otherwise, if it doesn't, then we're going to say if door dot functions dot closed, then door dot functions dot closed, and we're going to call it. So now we have one last thing. So let's say the, uh, the timestamp is less than one or is less than or equal to one. That's fine. So we need to get our adjusted timestamp. And this is where we finally use our third uh, service, the tween service. So adjusted timestamp is equal to tween service, get value, door.timestamp, door easing style. 
and then enum.easingdirection.inout. We're not going to really cover that. It's just a way, uh, it's just a style for the animation. And then our orientation is going to be equal to C frame from orientation zero door dot last desired angle plus door dot desired angle minus door dot last desired angle times the uh, adjusted timestamp and then zero. So that's all we have to worry about there. And then we're just going to copy this here. We're going to paste it here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is simply go uh, this, times orientation times offset. So there we go. And that's how we rotate it around a certain point. And now we can finish this off with tour door.timestamp is equal to door.timestamp plus delta time divided by time for door to open. And we have finished the entire script. So now all we have to do is return the create function. And now we go back to the client for one last thing. We need to go ahead and require the module that we created. And we need to call it on workspace, wait for child and the door. And now if we go ahead and press play, you will go ahead and see that this door does open when we go near it and when we go out of it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's how it works and it works as you can see. So now that you have a working door, I'm glad that you guys got through the tutorial. If you really enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like. If you had an issue, join the Spooks HD Discord link down in the description below. Best way for you to get help or leave a comment down below. That's fine. If you have a tutorial idea, go put it in the Discord or go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell button. It really helps because then you guys are able to get the latest updates on what I'm doing and what the channel is doing. So anyways, once again, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>